watching Neocash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. In the studio with you, it's JJ, Darren, and Pedro. We discuss some blockchain predictions. South Korea looks to license crypto exchanges. Banks look to crypto to become more competitive. All this and more in episode 243 here on Thursday, February 14th, 2018. In the traditional markets, we have gold up to $1,350. Silver's up to $16.85. Oil is up to $60.70. The Dow is up to 24,893 points. And the 30-year Treasury yield is up to 3.179%. And in the crypto markets, we have Bitcoin Cash up to $1,332, Bitcoin Segwit up to $9,293, Ethereum is up to $908, Dash is up to $663, and Litecoin is up to $207. Thank you for that, Darren and Pedro. Everything is up. Yeah, yeah. People, up. people must be really happy about crypto right now. Yeah. Uh, just a reminder, you can tune in to Neocash Radio every week. Don't want to miss a single moment of awesome Neocash content, including special episodes and bonus interviews. Subscribe to our podcast on Google Play Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Podcast Addict, and more. And we we have video now, obviously, if you're watching this. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like, share, and like and share the videos, Neocash Media YouTube channel. So starting out, uh, we put out a, a uh, couple videos this since our last Neocash Radio show. We put out a video that describes some of the development that's going on behind the scenes. And then we put out one this morning. That is the uh, the uh, crypto trader warning label, which I'll give you a quick little teaser here. The ninth item is there. There's a lot of volatility, hodling, which uh, is a word I don't like and is not a word. Uh, <laughs> hodling is not always the Hodl. best answer. It's not always the best answer. No, that's right. Especially if you bet your shirt. If you <laughs> bet your shirt, you're gonna want to get that shirt out of there as soon as you can't afford to have it in there anymore. So check out that video at neocashradio.com's website, and you can watch the full video and stay tuned for more because we're looking to do more things. So starting out with a South Korean story, uh, South Korea has been imposing various regulations on the cryptocurrency market, individuals, financial institutions, and exchanges. They are now looking to adopt an approval system based on the New York State's bit license system, sadly. The Financial Authority of South Korea would give licenses to cryptocurrency exchanges to operate where they must meet requirements. Different currency exchanges like BitThumb are welcoming this news as it legitimizes the space and could help unverified FUD news from causing downturns in the market, which is important stuff. Uh, yeah, and, and we've seen some of that come out of South Korea only to be retracted. Um, you know, So in a sense, this does provide some stability to, to the market in South Korea that, you know, the government is not looking to crack down and, and make all of crypto illegal. They're looking at, uh, you know, a, a license type, a regulated uh, market. But it's, it's kind of a shame they're looking at New York to, for, for the one they're going to mimic the regulations after because, I mean, I know in the U.S. that there are some services that are just aren't available in New York because of the uh, regulatory environment there. Yeah, in fact, there was a big move uh, where there was a social, I guess, outcry about the licensing such that businesses left New York for greener pastures. And mm -hmm. in fact, now it's one thing for the United States to have this with New York. You know, New York has the bit license and it is pretty much one of the most difficult and expensive licenses you could get for cryptocurrency uh, businesses. But then you have places like Nevada, which have very much protected the cryptocurrency uh, marketplace and blockchains and have also indicated that they're not taxable. So it's, it's one thing to have, you know, the A and B. But if South Korea has just a one sided approach, then it's going to be a little bit different uh, dynamic than we have here in the United States. Well, I would hope South Korea looks at other uh, countries in its uh, neighborhood like Japan and, and Singapore that are, are being, you know, much more open to crypto. And I'm hoping that while they might use the New York State bit license as a as a framework, they also have to compete with those other economies in the crypto space. And if they're if they're too hard on it, then, you know, it, to your point, the businesses are going to go elsewhere. That's right. Well, Salon Digital Media readers can choose between ads and mining Monero. That's an interesting story here. Yeah. 
Yeah, so Salon has been dependent on advertisements, but in a blog post this past Monday, they posted where uh, this model is now starting to be insufficient. So unlike the malware approach, which uses all available processing power, Salon says it will automatically detect current process processing usage and assign some of what's unused to mine Monero to its account. Provided this is all communicated to users, it can be a good model for people who are who, who want content from such a site, uh, but don't want to don't want to be distracted by looking at ads. So as long as you know the the user has the um, has the choice, then I, I think that's a good thing, and it's probably only the beginning. Yeah, I mean the one downside is anyone that's running on a battery basically would probably be against you know using up their battery to do this, so they can watch you know right. something or, in salon. So uh, yeah, they should re- they should remember that. I mean, um, hopefully they'll communicate to users. You know, if you're on a laptop, um, it will impact your battery if you're not plugged in. Um, but in in related mining news, also on February 11th, uh, thousands of websites became infected with malware um, that hijacks the browser to mine cryptocurrencies, and that's undetected by users. So uh, more than 4,000 sites were affected, inclu- including U.S. and U.K. government services. Oh wow, government wow. services. Yeah, that that only really upsets government even more when you <laughs> hijack their computers to make money. Right. Wow, that's uh, this, this is big news. I mean, the the whole malware malware to mine crypto. It's it really. How, how can we check if if I go to a website or if I maintain a website? How can I check if that website's infected? Is I, there is I, there a clear I, I, way? I think this is a new realm in the computer security world um you know that that needs to be looked at you know how how do you know whether you're going to an infected site that's using up all your processing power i mean typically don't benefit? they come through the advertisements or some scripts that, that oh yeah that's you know something ad scripts runs mm-hmm. i mean i think at some point the antivirus you know software vendors are going to start putting in detection tools that detect certain things that are you know specific to mining like it, is it connecting to a stratum server for example well that might be a clue that that that's mining software i think right now they're doing it the traditional way which is fingerprinting certain executables and such but you know what happens when it's uh you know javascript uh getting into moving on to other stories the small european banks are seeing cryptocurrencies as an opportunity to take on the big banks smaller banks in switzerland germany and Liechtenstein are interested in offering clients opportunities in the crypto space Swiss banks Avantable and Falcon Bank, German Fedor Bank, and Liechtenstein Bank Frick are offering a range of crypto services. This is this is pretty big news here. There's a bank named Frick. <laughs> there, That's there, awesome. Indeed. <laughs> okay, yeah. So so we got uh, what the Swiss, the Germans, and Liechtenstein all on board. It really, I mean, if the regulatory environment does it, this is a really good way for small banks to get. A little edge, and, and and this is what's in, interesting because we we've always talked about like how crypto can challenge you know the banks and you know I think really you know we look at the real big banks but uh, until recently I didn't really consider that this gives small banks the opportunity to challenge big banks as well, right? Yeah, so like th- this is you know as far as offering services like if if you can't have that volume the big banks are all about volume right so the small banks can be more about niche services they can be more you know they they obviously can't make the money through the volume like the big banks can and I think crypto is a perfect place to go and it's funny that you're, you're I mean in a way as you said the whole the anti bank aspect of crypto is sort of not really at play here instead of it's instead it's actually just adding another tool to the toolbox of this bank and uh you know it was funny that, that i recently i had some someone uh i was talking with i, I can't recall who but they they sort of in, in smirked in and we were talking about crypto and they smirked and said well it, it's funny how that all crypto is all interlinked with the traditional financial system and sort of dependent upon that and, 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 you know, in a way, I was like, I had to agree with, with that to a sense. But, I mean, there are certain scenarios where you can see a sort of loop of, of being able to get paid in crypto from your job if your job pays you in crypto and then going and buying gift cards that then buy you food at the grocery store or whatever. Mm-hmm. So there are, there are ways to sort of get outside of that, that, uh, that sort of habit of going back to the fiat dollar. But uh, the, the connection between... You know the finance, the financial economy is is very deep. All the different layers are working together, and 
I don't think it's necessarily something that you can fight against. You know what I'm saying? It's not like you can just say, oh, you should stop using the fiat because in a way they can't. I mean, a lot of people can't like, like, for example, here in New Hampshire, if I want to heat my home, I'm going to need fiat dollars to buy oil, you know, yeah, for, right. for, for my oil delivery. It's really, really important. And uh, like, Darren, you were actually talking about how you stopped holding Bitcoin as a you know, crypto holder and, and holding other things. But you have to hold a little bit just to pay for some server fees or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I still have some some of the Bitcoin segwit because, you know, there's a bill that comes every month for it's kind of a small bill, but it's just easier to pay with Bitcoin than it would be any other way. So, right. So I think you know that's you know there's there's that that's happening now, and I think it's going to continue. There are there are certainly people and vendors that are going to you know holdouts. They're not going to change until they absolutely or they don't have to. They they go out of business even. Mm-hmm. Like there yeah. are people who just won't change. Yeah. And I think they use BitPay. So as soon as BitPay, I mean, I haven't seen BitPay actually accept Bitcoin Cash. They said they would, but um, just from I mean, I haven't gone and sought it out, but I'm like, oh, I'm paying with BitPay and no Bitcoin Cash option. I'm, I'm no, what you can do with BitPay is you can have a Bitcoin Cash wallet as part of your BitPay wallet um, and, I, and, you know, sending and receiving stuff, but you can't load your card yet, which is... Oh, yeah, but the card is the card, but like some websites have pay with crypto. Yes. And you could pay with Bitcoin right on the website and, and they they... Big pay announced that they would ha- be Bitcoin cash enabled by the end of the end of January. And here we are middle February and yeah. we're not there yet. Well, the chief executive of Bank Frick was quoted as saying, quote, there are a lot of risks and uh, there are risks involved, but there are also really big opportunities. We know what we, what to do from a security perspective. So this is a big opportunity for banks like us. Unquote. He went on to comment that bigger financial institutions see virtual currencies as a, as a danger to their status quo and are scared because, quote, because they don't understand them, they feel threatened, unquote, which yeah, makes maybe. a lot of sense. Right. And, and big banks can also have, um, you know, lots of bureaucracy. So if some of the head people are, you know, they don't really see the, a lot of potential in crypto, then it's really difficult as a, a middle or lower level manager to try to push through some big ideas. But when you have small banks that can be more nimble, um, you know, that, that gives some opportunity. So, for example, Bank Frick offers advisory support for startups conducting ICOs. They screen investors. They facilitate investor access to crypto exchanges. And they take payment for these services in cryptocurrency. Uh, Vontable has a Bitcoin tracker in crypto betting facilities. Uh, Falcon Bank allows investors to buy virtual currencies and accept proceeds from crypto sales. And Fidor Bank offers a Euro bank account for the Kraken Exchange and also gives German clients access to a U.S.-based exchange. So it's interesting to see the smaller banks not seeing the big financial institutions not moving, starting to do their own moves and, and providing their customers a reason to work with them. And I think it's great. I mean, that's the spirit of entrepreneurship is, is you have to be innovative you know, you can't just expect that the government's going to uh, give you the, the leg up on your competition. And <laughs> like in some former markets or in some locations where it might be. But instead, you've got to try new things. You've got to be a risk taker. That's right. So, well, let's get on. We got it. This, this, uh, this story here from uh, media.consensus.net. Anyway, it's 18 blockchain pr- predictions for 2018. So, uh Number yeah, this one. is an interesting yeah. list to go through. Yeah, well, D- Darren, do you want to you want to start out? With? Sure. Um, uh, item this, one. This is their predictions, mind you. Yeah, We're going to talk about them. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, item one: Bitcoin is the generation of zero of blockchain technology, the opening act, the gateway drug, the first inning, MySpace. I, I think this is something we I have, have to alluded agree with to. That, yeah. 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 It it totally is. You're not going to have all the kinks worked out and everything set up, and and uh, you've got a lot of parameters you need to set at the beginning. Although I think the, a lot of the beginning parameters were set up very well and very intelligently. Uh, it's just not going to be enough for for the Segwit branch. No. Well, it, it's what it you know, just like MySpace versus Facebook and and other you know outlets and platforms. It's 
technology has changed. You know, right. between the eight years that Bitcoin, nine, well, nine years now, right, that Bitcoin has been around, technology, blockchain technology has changed a lot. Now, I understand that SegWit has been integrated into Bitcoin and there have been improvements made along the way, but I don't agree with the technology behind SegWit necessarily. Yeah. And, and, so. and, and MySpace, I mean, is a great example because clearly MySpace had value that it provided. And if it didn't, if it didn't, you wouldn't see, you know, some of the successors like Facebook uh, be on the market now. So I think that's pretty, pretty reasonable. And everybody wants to be a friend with Tom, of course. So, <laughs> and, uh, so number two is in 2018, uh, in, in blockchain years, is the equivalent of 1994 to... 1996 boom of the internet. This is this is something I can see happening, and it's yeah. it's very exciting. You know, I think you know, yeah. 2017 midway 2017 through the end of 2018 is going to be uh, very very big in the crypto. Yeah, you know, if we could get some bigger blocks, that would be great. <laughs> So. Yeah, I mean, that's, I agree with the idea that it's going to continue to boom and there are more I mean, people involved, more bigger players. Like it's, I say give or take the general spirit of this thing that kind of rings true to me. Of course, it's a prediction. We, there's no way we could ever know. So number three, Ethereum will continue to be the largest blockchain developer ecosystem in 2018 by many multiples because the developer, the, because the, Developers, 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 and developers. The ecosystem with the most developers typically, but not always, wins. Now, I kind of like the idea of developers. I think that's really reasonable to look at. That's something you want to, you know, if you're thinking about putting money away for any period of time, you definitely want to see the people that are maintaining the project and, and you know, know they have the technical know-how and they and, and a little bit of business acumen to, to, to do a, do well and get a good project going. But I, th I think we've seen that the Ethereum space has been very scammy. I mean, we Neocash Radio had to keep telling people, hey, we don't, and there is no ICO associated with Neocash oh, yeah. Radio. This, and, so, yeah, that's, that's a huge thing. When we had a little video I put out on Saturday this last week about the fact that there is this scam going on, but... That that's funny, and maybe it's, it's like since the scam, the scam basically had them go to our websites, and, and and like our social media. But it's like they had they had these people go to our social media, and it's like they're on our social media as, as us saying this is not we're not affiliated with this, right? And they're sharing it and all this, which is fine. You can share the facts, which is we're not affiliated with any ICO. It just it's it's just so weird that money comes in and the whole thing is based on a Google Doc for basically no investment. People are getting this money, no upfront cost. People are just getting money, you know, getting things sent to them. And they may have a contract that does give you a token, but what good is that token going to do you? It's it's just you know it's just silly. I mean, it doesn't. I, I, I think okay. So Darren, I I think the spirit of this prediction is that Ethereum will do more developing than anyone else, which I I totally agree with because it's not just the Ethereum uh, virtual machine that's being developed. I was worried about it when it started, and I'm more worried about it now. I think it's I think Ethereum is and Pedro, feel free to disagree with me. I'd love to hear your input on this, but I feel like Ethereum at the from the very get go it was biting off too much it was trying to be too much to too many people and you get a few crypto kitties or whatever bot things they've got trading and you know the whole network gets brought down to its knees and you know if you've got your project you don't want somebody else's project to like like really slow down or bring your project to a halt but i i'm i'm going to disagree slightly there because i i think that while we do have these things like ico scams going on in ethereum and we have things like crypto kitties that explodes the the use of of the blockchain and, and, and i down, love the idea of crypto kitties i think that's like a valid use of the the ethereum chain of course i mean but but, it's, but yeah. all, all this with all the developers behind it is driving some of the best work and scalability on blockchain as well. So yeah, so Ethereum is in the predicament this year. I feel where it can really take off and it can really crush the network. But they are also investing a lot of development into various ways of of scaling. So I'm still bullish on on Ethereum. But I agree that until it does scale, Darren, it, it could be a challenge if yeah. you know some app gets really popular. Can people tweet their crypto kitties 
Hey, could people t- tweet their? Crypto I have. Kitties? I honestly have. I, can, it, can we ask? I paid people, no attention to the crypto can, kitties. Can we ask people to t- tweet their crypto kitties to Neil Cash? Radio? You, yes, Darren, you okay. can. Okay, yeah, tweet your crypto kitties because I think they're cool. They're neat, but I, I wouldn't spend a lot of money on them. That's that doesn't make any sense. Well, what the Etherbots? That's the new one now. Right? Oh yeah, the Etherbots. And I don't those know. ones we'll, actually battle, and there's actually things there's interactions. Oh no, I, I, well, I, I just want to see your cats. Show me your cats. <laughs> this this guy loves cats. The internet. No, cats. I like looking at cats. He likes. Look, okay, okay. Yeah. Like looking at cats, but I, don't actually send I have him any a little real dog, cats. and that's or that's that's enough. Wow. Yeah. Well, number four, uh, blockchain will be a vessel of good. There will be a huge increase in crypto-related humanity humanitarian applications in 2018. Yeah. Could very well be true. I think. I mean, we we've seen the UN take uh, some interest here on ways to secure, you know, giving uh, you know funds out to refugees and and other people being displaced. Uh, there's also talk of a basic universal income, which is awesome if you want to privately fund that. Um, so I, I think this is, you know, pretty accurate. Yeah, I, I think that this could be true, and we won't see news stories about it because, I mean, if good philanthropists will do, do their work and nobody will know. Excellent. So number five, enterprises will take the training wheels off. Internets were good, tr- great training wheels until the Internet was persuasive. Yes. So, so I think the point they're making here is um, there's a lot of enterprises that, you know, for example, Fidel- Fidelity uh, last year got into crypto in their Fidelity Labs division. Um, you know, the CEO uh, had them start mining and for the purpose of getting, uh, you know, smarter with crypto, not not for making money. So I think 2018 might be the breakout year where we have, you know, really big enterprises, you know, putting in significant projects in crypto. Yeah, and there's, you know, there's so there's basically like a uh, toe in the water test going on. So you have AXA doing the flight insurance on the blo- Ethereum blockchain uh, and, and other companies doing these small little basically like we'll take some menial task. We'll put it on the blockchain and we'll see how it works within our systems. And really, I think it's you you have to consider that some of these companies have to re- rewrite their workflow and their protocol for dealing with situations because now they're now they're interacting with the blockchain technology which takes a big chunk of their old way of doing things and it throws it out the window so you're you're like you you have to consider that 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 there is a big move that happens especially these worldwide companies that they're changing a lot of things internally they're retraining people they're they're getting a lot of staff on board and that is just going to take time so and uh, number six, uh, proof of stake changes the consensus game. I'm actually not too sure what to think about this. I am keeping an eye at on uh, the Ethereum because they are playing to change this proof of stake, but they keep delaying that. Um, I do think that's going to be a, a, a big deal when it happens, at least from a an investigative tr- standpoint. I, I, I'm not really saying it's going to affect the price or anything. It's just, I mean... It's it's just going to be interesting to see if if that large of a chain can do proof of stake and not have uh, any type of you know some type of economic attack that wasn't thought of or, or or did they really fix the nothing at stake problem and all that I I, I do th- I mean if anybody does it I think the Ethereum team will but uh, it's going to be interesting to see yeah and hopefully they're going to take it uh, you know as has been reported in the past they're going to do it over phases so we're not just going to flip a switch and and go to proof of stake but the benefits of this are obviously a lot less power being used uh, to secure a network yes a lot less power but will it be as secure well it needs to be as secure that's right i mean anyway so uh so uh, item seven token fever I kind of actually disagree with this one. I, I'm kind of thinking if, if, I, if I put one more word, I might actually agree with it. Peak token fever. Peak token fever. Like the token fever that already exists? Yeah. It, it might peak this year. So, so the token fever where we've been aware of up until now has been ICOs, which, right. um, you know, most of them are securities. There are a few that you could really say are utilities. But then there's another type of token token that I think is going to take off this year, and that's a um, security token, one that is from a registered company on a registered blockchain. So um, there are a couple of companies doing stuff here. We have Polymath out of Canada, and they're looking to provide uh, Know Your Customer and all the other um, you know identified investor to allow 
securities tokens that have gone issued through the SEC to be put on a blockchain. And one of those blockchains that have been approved by the SEC is T0. So potentially we can have traditional securities that just live on a blockchain instead of NASDAQ, for example. So, okay, that, looking at it from that side, I think it's a more agreeable statement. But I would say that the token fever has already happened as far as the, the glut of ICOs and token sales that have happened. This past uh, 2017, the summer and fall of, of 2017, was just a huge time for tokens to do their thing. And I, I mean, I, I don't know what else to, to say. Yeah, so um, number eight, and I am a participant in this one, the blockchain ecosystem will ramp up their educational resources tremendously. And I personally am involved in a project to get to launch a blockchain course that will be on our, uh, Coursera. It will be done in partnership with ASU and the Dash. Uh, it's partially funded by Dash as well. And uh, and so uh, I I think that's going to be a great resource for a lot of people. It's going to, uh, it's basically going to be available for the, to the world and there's different levels you can do it. You can have, I think you can have a free version or you can pay a little bit of money, take basically three courses and uh, get a certificate and, uh, or you could actually take it towards a degree if you're enrolled at ASU. So I think that there's going to be a lot of demand for these types of certificates because, I mean, we, we, we haven't seen every application, and, and it's going to be decades until we, until we see the bulk of how this can be applied. Yep. The, number nine, the IRS and their equivalents globally will be demanding their pound of flesh. I think this one is, is pretty accurate. Yeah. yeah. I think it's just after after eight nine years of Bitcoin and Bitcoin, of course, hitting twenty thousand at some point, that you know it's sort of like there's so much money. A lot of people yeah. are are becoming very wealthy, and the tax mm-hmm. institutions around the world are, are they want their cut. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Brace yourself, folks, and yeah. and pay your taxes. Yeah, just be ready. Know what you're getting into. I mean, it's it's better that you uh, understand the risks you're taking rather than just you know, ignoring them. Number 10, people will take control of their online identities. Well, this could be interpreted a few ways, JJ. If it's like saying that I get to control what people say about me online, I I don't think that's going to happen. But perhaps if, if people could establish an online identity and continue, like keep that identity as they go website to website, I think that's definitely something that could happen this year or soon. Technically, that's already happened because you can go to darrentop.com and see my PGP key, and then I can sign things and I can have an established identity that way, um, interacting with people on the internet. But that's not really ready for prime time yet. I mean, I, I, there's a lot of cases where people do want to be able to say and verify that you know this post that I put out did come from me. So maybe you know some type of crypto way of or a cryptographic way of ensuring that that's your identity I mean, and, and somehow tying it into... I mean, I already did that with my PGP. You can go to darrentap.com, which is not very impressive. I'm working on revamping it. But um, you you just click on the paper at the top about... Or you click on publications, and there's a paper, and then there's actual PGP signature there, too. So you can verify that I intended to put that out. Um, so, I mean, we already have that technology. It's just not being applied widely. All right. Well, number 11, in 2018, governments and regulatory bodies will mandate the use of blockchain to track and trace high-value assets, which... Uh, yeah. I mean, there's, there's already various projects out there about tracking, for example, a, a sale of a car or a you know, sale of real estate. Um, so I think that's definitely going to increase. Now, whether governments demand that that happen, um, I don't know. Um, I, I think that's. A, I think it's a stress to say, a stress to say mandate. But I do think that there will be more exploration in this area, and really, what I think we're missing, and that is so commonplace, even people don't even think about it, is standards like the USB standard, for example, and and various other standards where different businesses and different uh, markets can interact and use the same standard. So, for as as far as tracking things. Uh, on the blockchain, I think you know there's this, there's we're gonna have a standard by which this is the information that needs to be there in order for it to meet this standard. So, 
Uh, number 12, the evolution of law will continue to intersect computer science. Yes. Uh, yes. I mean, smart I, I, contracts. I would change evolution to pestilence, but um, pestilence. yes, uh, you know, the, the law is behind on this technology, you know, around the world. And I think now that, you know, more people are becoming wealthy, more things are happening, more disruptions happening, that more governments will start, you know, adding laws specific to crypto. And I'm, I'm kind of concerned what this would mean for free speech. I mean, we've seen some laws come out of Germany and some other places that uh, make it hard for, you know, speech platforms like Facebook and others to actually, uh, you know, comply with the, the, the regulations. And uh, I mean, something like Facebook has the resources to, to comply. But if you're just a small time guy setting up some simple little uh, forum, forum or something like that, I, I would hate to see the regulations uh, p put some undue burden on the person who organized the forum and not on the people who use the forum, for example. So. Yeah. Uh, for quote, number 13, quote, for the first time, open source peer-to-peer -peer protocol developers can monetize their project on a protocol level, unquote. Olaf Carson Wee. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing things like the basic attention token, um, you know, trying to use uh, a utility token so that, you know, content providers can get paid can get paid for page views. So you know, bring this to the protocol level, and it could provide you know a, a better way that people can monetize their work. Yeah, I, I I could definitely see that, and and you know the whole thing of microtransactions, uh, you know that's a big big thing right there too, because it's like not everything you do in this space needs you know a twenty five dollar you know, a ticket item on it. You know, some things watching a video, listening to music, maybe it's cents, maybe it's pennies that you really want to make off of this, you know? So, uh, but anyway, number 14, bugs be gone. Smart contract audits will be a necessity in 2018. Well, smart contract audits were ne a necessity in what? 2011, 2012. They're always a, necessity. always a necessity. Like, like, what is this? Like, but I don't think the bugs more? are going to go away. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yes, it's going to be a necessity. People won't do it. And even if people do it, you know, that's why bugs are bugs. So you just don't see them. But smart contracts have, I mean, so we saw what happened with the DAO. When you have a, a smart contract that's control of, of money or, or something akin to money, you really want to make sure there's, there's no bug there. So, you know, maybe what they're getting at is like, this is going to be extremely important in 2018. If you have a major project, a, a major company, and you're providing a major service using a smart contract, that has to be looked six ways a Sunday because if there's something wrong in it, your whole business plan can come down. Right, and and as we've seen, uh, these these you know it's not just smart contracts. It's like also getting into the like parity multi sig wall issues that have happened. So it's there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of layers as far as bugs. I don't think we're ever going to get rid of bugs. I think as long as people are still writing code, they'll still be writing bugs too. Number fifteen. Don't just regulate the blockchain. Regulate through the blockchain. That's 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 an interesting. Yeah. So um, I, I mean, an example of this is a uh, company Harbor is is doing something similar to Polymath, where they're going to do a smart co contract for uh, ERC uh, smart uh, twenty tokens, and what they're looking at is they're going to make the contract in a way that you can only move money between verified accounts. So that account had to have had know your customer stuff done. So what they're trying to do is build the regulation of. Uh, you know, if I have one of these tokens and I'm, uh, you know, a verified uh, institutional or a verified investor and, and Darren, you're an investor, then I, I can sell that token to you. But if JJ's not, you know, a verified investor, then I can't sell it to him. And they're baking this right into the uh, smart contract. That's smart. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, as far as the, the ICO, I mean, then know your know your customer stuff. Like there, it is. There is. There is definitely a part of market that wants that, that needs that, and they will have that. Um, but that, maybe this goes back to that previous one about identities and controlling your identity. Is I think you know there are blockchain solutions out there where you create an identity as part. That's what the blockchain is all about, and then you use that to prove your identity at other you know transactions and other uh, instances of of yeah. crypto economics. So, yeah, that that will probably be there. So stable coins, uh, number 16, stable coins are coming for financial derivatives. Now, 
How? Financial derivatives in the crypto space kind of scare me. Stable I, coins I, are like a, a, a like a f- mythical yeah, unicorn. I don't know unless there's like unless Russia issued some type of crypto ruble that they were talking about or something. Unless like a actual state with a state currency issues this crypto token and has the, the regulates it similar to the way they regulate their other thing or makes it redeemable one for one for their state currency. I don't see any stable coin in our future. Not a not a not a honest one. <laughs> All right, number 17, um more futures markets and digital asset exchange exchange traded funds. <sighs> I mean, I hope not. I think so. I'm I, tired I, of them. I think I think it's there's there's people who want more gambling. I think there are people who and and maybe Maybe crypto is bringing out more people addicted to gambling. That might be. That might be why people are, you know, falling for these scams. They don't really care. They're just like, I might be able to sell it for more later. And that can be the case no matter what the fundamentals are. I I mean, the crypto space is, relatively speaking, still very, very small. I mean, it's smaller than McDonald's. All of it. So... Things like futures and and, and and trying to predict the price on, on such a, a small, you know, uh, value uh, investment pro- pro- proposition is, is really speculative. So any bit of news, you know, another country comes out with the rumor that it might be banning it can do ma- major price swings. So I'm, I'm kind of concerned that we're not ready for this yet. Well, number 18, the total market cap of blockchain-based digital assets will exceed $2 trillion uh, U.S. dollars by January 1st, 2019. Uh, I don't know. Well, what did we peak at in we, December? Like I think almost 700? 700, 700-something, 700 yeah, 750-something. I guess that's not that extreme in the crypto world. I, I think that once one of these like currency cryptos if any one of them gets a market cap of a trillion i think that will be a game changer i think that uh, a trillion just for one of them will be now this is a significant amount of money here some that if the news doesn't get crazy like oh something bad happens something good happens something bad happens something good happens that will allow the ability for the 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 volatility to somewhat settle down a bit and uh, and really, that's about the threshold I put where you start transitioning from uh, a neat little thing that you you can trade among small things and a and a and a really serious thing that you can start thinking about using as a currency. Yeah, I, to, to to say that, I mean this this really gets into the price prediction stuff, and it, 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 you know it very well could hit two thousand two trillion dollar market cap before two thousand nineteen, and then it could fall back. To one thousand one trillion dollar market cap before two thousand nineteen. I think all of that's possible. I mean, it really depends on a bunch of things. So one big thing that hasn't quite happened yet is that tethers are still in the market, still being used. In fact, still being used a lot. Yeah, that's and it true. doesn't seem like they're going away. Well, it seems like there has been major spikes, like the very first spike to a thousand. You know that it seemed like there was a year or two of a lull where the market really didn't do much as far as price going up, um, and I think that we definitely could see a lull for 2018, just like we saw a lull in the past. Yeah, but there's no way any of us can know for sure, so it's it's kind of silly to speculate. Well, thanks for that, guys, and we'll have more Neo Cash content coming to you uh, this week and next week. Uh, any content on the Neo Cash Radio podcast on our website should not be regarded as financial or legal advice. Please be mindful of any and all regulations regarding cryptocurrency in your particular jurisdiction. Never invest or gamble more than you're willing to lose and always safeguard your digital currency by keeping it in a wallet whose private keys you control. For Neo Cash Radio, this is JJ. This is Darren. This is Pedro. Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today.